Good evening. So this will be our third launch for 2012 at the Guiana Space Center and second launch for Ariane 5 with tonight, once more, two very important clients for Ariane Space. First, Sky Perfect JSAT for Japan with the launch of JCSAT-13, a big communications satellite which will cover the whole of the Japanese archipelago, and Venusat-2 for Vietnam and Lockheed Martin, which is to serve Vietnam. You may remember that four years ago, we had launched Vinsat-1, the first Vietnamese satellite. Therefore, we are tonight very proud to be launching this second satellite. So, all in all, these are two missions intended for Asia, a continent in full boom, and one that is especially key to air and space, as this year we have already signed several contracts in this region of the world. Also noteworthy is the fact that tonight we shall be launching the 100th and 101st commercial satellite produced by Lockheed Martin, a major partner of Air and Space. As you can see, this year should be a very busy one. Third launch of the year tonight, with seven more to come, as after this one, we still plan some five more for Arian and two for Soyuz. But without further ado, I will let you enjoy this beautiful event with the launch of Arian 5 ECA, which will be orbiting JCSAT-13 and Venusat-2. Hello and welcome. We're coming to you live from the Guyana Space Centre. I'm Katie Haswell and joining me in the commentary box is our technical expert from Ariane Space, Antoine Courtois. Yes, hello, and there is Ariane on the pad. We have two passengers on board tonight, JCSAT-13 and VNASAT-2. And a special hello to everybody who's watching us at uh, VNPT in Hanoi, at Sky Perfect JSAT Corporation, and you folk at Lockheed Martin Newtown in Pennsylvania, who built both satellites, incidentally, which is uh, particularly special. Uh, right now, everything is green, you saw it. So we have a go for lunch. And you can see the countdown there on the top right-hand side of the screen. Ariane 5 is a big, strong, reliable workhorse. She's divided into three main sections. We start with the solid boosters with a mass equivalent to seven heavy trucks each and a thrust equivalent to six jumbo jets. And we have the main stage with a height of 31 meters, roughly uh, a 10-story building. Just above the stocky one, the upper stage, a cryogenic two, uh, with a mass uh, equivalent to a business jet. And then on the top of that, we have the fairing. It's that uh, top nose of the uh, vehicle. It's the equivalent of a six-story building and weighs in at the weight of a family car. Now, mission control is about 15 kilometers from the launch pad. This is what we're looking at now, and uh, uh, Antoine and I are here in our commentary box. Yes, we call it Jupiter. And we're looking here at a, a special group of people, Antoine. It's the flight directorate. Absolutely. Uh, and at the head of the flight directorate, there is uh, Mr. Jean-Yves Le Gall. Uh, they are the highest technical authority and take all decisions about the launch. They have the final say in the case of unplanned situation and all the teams across the base report to them in real time. And the satellites are inside Ariane, underneath that fairing, that nose at the top of the launcher. And if we were to put our X-ray glasses on, this is what we would see. JCSAT is on the top. Yes, JCSAT for Sky Perfect JSAT Corporation, waiting uh, around uh, 4,528 kilometers at liftoff. And underneath it, we have Venusat 2 for Lockheed Martin Commercial Space Systems and uh, weighing in roughly at uh, 2969 kilograms. And the conditions underneath that fairing are very, very carefully controlled. What's it like in there? Yes, uh, we have a cleanliness uh, requirement, which is uh, paramount, but uh, we have also to monitor humidity and uh, air conditioning to provide uh, temperature. 
uh, adjustment. And uh, currently, engineers are monitoring the Earth of uh, satellites right until takeoff. Absolutely. So they're in their first class compartment with their seat belts on getting ready for launch. JC sat on top and the teamwork between Arian Space and Japan goes back many years. Let's find out more. The solid relation between Ariane Space and Sky Perfect JSL Corporation started in 1989 with the successful launch of JCSat-1 on an Ariane 4 rocket. This illustrates the actual confidence that the company is putting on Ariane Space and its fleet. And once again, the fact that Lockheed Martin has put two of their satellites in the fairing tonight on Ariane 5 gives confirmation of the confidence that this company is having uh, upon Ariane Space and its launcher fleet. And as you say in Japanese, JCSAT Ju san no Uchiage Seiko o Negat Imas. Our other passenger is Venusat 2. And uh, Ariane Space launched Vietnam's first communication satellite in 2008. So we are very proud to be selected to launch the second one, Venusat 2, today. Absolutely. Um, and it'll mean Venusat, uh, the Vietnamese operator, will be able to offer people an even better range of telecommunication services. Vinasat 2 is the second satellite that VNPT is putting on RN5. First one was Vinasat 1, launched in 2008, and it's a proof of VNPT confidence in RN space services. For Vinasat 2, Lockheed Martin was provided with much more than a launch vehicle. The overall launch services offered by RN space cover the preparation of a specific mission, the detailed planning of the operations on ground. For the first time on Venusat 2, uh, Iron Space has offered Lockheed Martin with two uh, options in terms of launch vehicle, Iron 5 or Soyuz. This has allowed to keep open several launch opportunities until late into the program. This can prove of outstanding benefit in terms of launch dates flexibility. There's Ariane on the pad going through those final preparations. There are some uh, key people in mission control the mission uh, director there, and also the range operations manager. He makes the key announcement, you just heard it. That's right, and uh, it's his voice that we're hearing now. He's just announced a key milestone in the launch. The last seven minutes, it's the synchronized sequence or automated sequence, and as its uh, name suggests, the computers are now running all the final operations and controls before launch. What's happening? The computers are now taking over from people as we get close to the launch and they manage an impressive list of operations during these last seven minutes. The launcher is now becoming progressively automated. Teams have been working for weeks here at the Guyana Centre preparing Ariane for today. The campaign started as usual in the Launcher Integration Building, or BIL, where the various sections were assembled, the two solid propellant boosters and both the main and upper cryotechnic stages. These highly skilled operations involve checking the electrical and fluid subsystems. The launcher was then transferred to the BAF, the final assembly building, awaiting its passengers. Meanwhile, a few kilometres away, JCSAT-13 and Venusat-2 underwent their own final preparations. All this in the extremely safe and secure environment of the dedicated buildings where cleanliness is paramount. All these operations were performed in perfect cooperation between Ariane Space and their customers' teams. The next step involved resting the spacecraft on top of the launch vehicle under the protective environment of the fairing. Venusat 2 was placed first at the bottom and JCSAT 13 on top. Exceptional skill was required when handling these two examples of expert engineering. At this point, the launcher and its passengers were ready to start their final journey. The day before launch, the whole thing was transferred to the pad along a dedicated track, all fully integrated on the launch table, ready for the final preparations. 
And you might have noticed lots of green trees there. That's because here at the spaceport, we're on the edge of the Amazon rainforest near the equator in South America. It's the raining season right now. It's hot and it's humid. Uh, we've had the last weather check. Not too much rain, but could rain stop a launch, Antoine? No, rain isn't a problem, but we do need to monitor other things, like the winds, which can blow the launcher, of course, but to also to look at storm clouds to avoid any risk uh, from lightning. But tonight, there seems to be have uh, no issues, and uh, the weather status panel is still green. And the base is made up of a number of different facilities, such as the launch zones, for example, the integration buildings. The whole thing is known as the range, and the range includes the ground stations, which are dotted along the flight path, which track the launcher as we fly over. Uh, Mission Control is the nerve centre of the range. It's 15 kilometres from the pad. It's a bit like uh, the control tower at an airport. And imagine uh, the launcher could be an airplane and the passengers will be satellites. This control tower gives the greens light for takeoff and uh, this is happen only when all the conditions are correct. Absolutely. And another key operations centre is launch control and that's only three kilometres from the pad. So whereas mission controllers deal with the whole mission, that's everything across the range, the launch controllers deal solely with the launcher itself and the launch pad and here they are now. And there are uh, more than uh, 100 people working here. They deal with all the systems concerning the launcher and the launch zone. They started their preparations months ago, but right now their job is to make sure Ayan is ready for takeoff. During the synchronized sequence, the computers are running the final controls and they have to coordinate a lot of checks in a very short period of time. Once all the conditions are correct, then the onboard computer will give the order to start the engines. This is launch zone number three. It's just one of a whole set of systems across the range that we need to monitor, and these are reflected on the status panels, which we see in uh, mission control. It's a bit like the dashboard in the car, isn't it, Antoine? They must all be green for launch. That's right. They are showing us the status of all the main systems, like the satellites, the launch system, like, uh, it includes the launcher on the pad, but also the, the range, things like telemetry, radars, weather and flight safety, and they all send their status to the panels. If you take a look at the top of the vehicle, you can see what we call the cryotechnic arms. They're those orange arms feeding from the launcher to the uh, the tower. And they're feeding cryotechnic propellant to the upper stage of the vehicle. That's liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. And it's extremely uh, cold. You can just see them there, the orange arms. Yeah. Uh, for liquid hydrogen, it is loaded at minus 253 degrees Celsius and oxygen uh, at uh, minus 183 degrees Celsius. So you see these fluids are so cold they evaporate and we have to fill the tanks until the very last moment. And you can see those arms clamping there onto the vehicle and those fluids going through. So we're going to see those disconnect just a few seconds before launch. Look out for that. Another thing to look out for is we'll see a, second, a seven second delay between ignition and liftoff. What's that about? Yes, yeah, starting the Vulcan engine first and then there is a check before we ignite the boosters. Attention pour moins une minute. Coming up to one minute to launch, all electrical systems being switched to flight mode. Top, H0 moins une minute. We're live at the Guyana Space Center for the launch of an Ariane 5 ECA. We're orbiting two passengers today, JCSAT 13 for Japan and Venusat 2 for Vietnam. Welcome, if you're just joining us, our very best wishes to our customers and to everybody who's worked so hard to bring us to today's launch. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top.
Allumage du Vulcain. Allumage EAP, décollage. La propulsion est nominale, les paramètres bord sont nominaux. And there she goes, hauling herself against the gravity of the Earth. After the initial six-second vertical climb, we rotated to the east and we're now heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. We're burning three engines, the Vulcan you saw there uh, in Les the images, plus two boosters, but it's the boosters that are doing all the work here. Their job's to get us away from the Earth and we need an awful lot of firepower to push us against gravity. Antoine, they're your babies, aren't they, the boosters? You're a pyrotechnics expert and you first spent many years working with them. That's true, and they are providing 90% of our thrust uh, right now. Each booster burns two tons of solid propellant per second, and to give you an idea, if you fill your car once a week, that's how much gas normal. you would use in a year. Quite incredible, and we can hear it uh, now. The sound has finally reached us. Beautiful images here at night. It's incredible to think those boosters are burning at uh, 3,000 degrees Celsius. Yes. And they're next to the main cryotechnic la stage. La propulsion is nominal, the trajectory is normal, the parameters of bord are normal. Everything's normal. Um, we're looking here at the trajectory graph on the left-hand side of the screen. This is what everybody is watching now in this part of the flight. Tell us about it. The curve is uh, actually a computed simulation of uh, the trajectory, and uh, there is, you see a white dot on the curve, it's the actual position of, of the launch vehicle. You have to look at uh, two main parameters, the velocity or speed, normal, it's uh, the V in kilometer, kilometers per second, and altitude, uh, or A, in kilometers. So those are the two things to keep your eye on throughout this flight. And we can now see those two boosters à falling away. They have burnt their fuel. It's taken them uh, just over two minutes. We don't need them anymore, so they fall back to Earth. There they go. Those two dots you can see coming away, and that's the main engine you can see in the middle. We're losing weight, Antoine. Uh, yes, we just lost about three quarters of our, our initial weight in just over two minutes. Uh, so the lighter we are, the faster we go. It's a basic law of physics. Now, we saw the fairing earlier, the structure at the top of the launch vehicle. The fairings protecting the satellites from the rigors of the launch. What kind of rigors are we talking about? Mainly acoustic vibration at least off. It's very loud, but also friction since the launcher is flying through our dense atmosphere at very high speed. So it is eating up. De la quoi. And uh, we're now getting separation of the fairing. We can see it falling away there. It comes away in two halves. And the reason we don't need it anymore is because we're now effectively in space. We're out of the atmosphere of the Earth. It's an incredible thing to think that it takes us only three minutes uh, to travel through the Earth's uh, atmosphere. It makes you realize how little separates us from space, Antoine. Yes, the thick part of the atmosphere is about 100 kilometers deep. And if you were <laughs> driving your car, let's imagine, on a very vertical highway into the sky, it will take you about... 15 minutes. That's, that's quite, quite longer. That's quite something, isn't it? Uh, so the satellites are now exposed to space, and we can see JC sat at the front, and Venus sat's behind it, and that white cylinder you're looking at is the main stage. Tell us about it. Uh, its engine burns for uh, nine minutes, roughly, and uh, it is known as, as the Vulcan, it, which is extremely powerful. It is uh, doing all the work uh, right now. And it's effectively, we can see it there, a, a big tank of propellant isn't it? Yes, it's the cryogenic uh, stage and the engine is uh, burning a mix of uh, liquid oxygen and hydrogen. There we can see those uh, wonderful images, the 3D images as we call them there, of the launcher as it flies through space. At Arian Space, there's a whole set of people, uh, many teams dedicated to making sure the launch is ready. One of them's Kate Underhill, and we've been finding out more about what she does. My name is Kate Underhill. I'm a mechanical engineer in Arian Space, in the uh, operations and launch division. 
and it's been three years I've been working or launching Iron 5 at Vega and Soyuz in Guyana. So it's a bit of a cliche, but it's always been a girl's dream to work in the space industry, to work in science and space exploration. So uh, I did a first degree in physics in England, which I followed by a master's in space engineering. Uh, my first job was the European Space Agency in the Netherlands, working in the propulsion department. And then I moved into France and CNES to work with their launchers, launcher development, and then over at RNSPS to work on launch operations. My job at RNSPS is all the mechanical operations necessary for a launch, from the, uh, the arrival of the first parts of the launch onto the base until the uh, final countdown. I work on all parts of the launch RN5, from the boosters, the main stage, also up to uh, satellite integration. I work on the uh, clamp band tensioning of satellites with their correct separation and also looking after the launch base, making the interface, interfaces between launch base and the launcher to get everything ready on time. For this particular launch campaign, I'm responsible for the uh, mechanical and fluid interfaces, uh, which means all the interfaces uh, between the launcher and the launch base to give uh, the launch everything it needs. So we're talking about energy, fluids, uh, oxygen, hydrogen, uh, nitrogen. I'm working with all the different industrials and all different companies to bring this together and then presenting the work to the COEL. He is the head of launch operations. We have a daily meeting with him to inform him of the state of the launch base, the operations that have been done, the anomalies, the problems we found and the, the solutions we found to these problems. So every day I'm working, uh, uh, interfacing with a, a large number of different teams from uh, all over Europe. They're working together on the launch operations, assembling the launcher and also getting the buildings and the launch pad ready on time. During the transfer between the final assembly building and the launch pad, the launcher is connected to a dedicated supply system which feeds it enough air and electricity to last during the rollout. Once it's arrived on the pad, all the fluid connections to the main and upper stages then have to be performed in the correct order to avoid any negative impact on the launcher or the base. I like the most about my job is, uh, is the variety, is uh, the contact with all the different people uh, working with uh, all the different European companies but also uh, different customers from all over the world and it's a fact that you never stop learning every day there are new things to learn about the launcher about the satellites about the launch pad Heading out across the Atlantic now, our flight path takes us virtually along the equator. We're tracking the launcher using ground stations. It's called telemetry. And we've just acquired the signal from the second one, Natal in Brazil. The stations listen out for the launcher as she flies over. Yes, Ayan sends data to those ground stations. This tells us this tells us how the flight is progressing and later we can analyze the data to see how the vehicle performed. Now during the flight the various parts of the launcher are jettisoned once they've burnt their propellant and we've already seen the boosters and the fairing drop away. Next is the main stage but there are smaller parts too Antoine aren't there? That's right. Once the engine cuts off the fluids in the tanks moves a lot so we need to keep it steady so the filling lines can suck it up. Just like when you drink with a straw, if your glass is moving, you might miss uh, some of the juice. We have to keep uh, that juice at the bottom in the glass. So to do that, we have two pairs of uh, rockets on the upper stage and they give a short burn. This pushes the upper stage forward and the propellant backward. And we shall see those rockets drop away now. We are seeing the extinction, or the cut-off, if you like, of the main stage engine, which has switched off. It's burnt Allumage all its propellant, and we are now igniting the upper stage engine. So, we're shedding weight, Antoine. Yes, we started with uh, nearly 800 tons at liftoff. Now we have 28 tons left. It's just 3% of our original mass. And, of course, the job of the upper stage is to deliver the satellites to their transfer, transfer orbit. It's been a very busy year at Ariane Space, particularly as the family of launchers has grown to three. Let's find out more. 
In March, Ariane Space successfully launched the third automated transfer vehicle to the International Space Station. The cargo ship docked autonomously with the ISS as they both flew at 28,000 kilometers an hour. It's delivered welcome supplies to the astronauts, as well as offering extra temporary living space. In April, Ariane Space confirmed its leading position in the Japanese market during the Japan Week event. Co-chairman of the EGBRT, Jean-Yves Le Gall then met the president of the European Council, Hermann von Rompuy, in Brussels to report the round table's recommendations. On the international scene, Ariane Space attended the inaugural Global Aerospace Summit in Abu Dhabi and the Australasia Satellite Forum in Sydney, having launched all Australia's satellites since 2003. The Ariane Space Annual General Meeting approved 2011 financial statements showing a net income of 1.6 million euros on sales of 1012.6 million, underlining the company's business growth in 2012, given the same return with operation of Iron 5, Soyuz and Giga from the CSG. The board of directors renewed the appointment of Jean-Yves Le Gall as chairman and CEO. With Arian Space's extended family of launch vehicles comes a whole new set of launch zones. Arian Space invited its ground facilities insurers to visit the base, underpinning Arian Space's robust attitude to getting the best from the Guyana Space Centre. Early May, Jean-Yves Le Gall met the Vice President of the European Commission, Antonio Tajani. They confirmed, along with ESA, the choice of Arian Space to launch all Europe's Galileo navigation constellation as well as several GMES satellites on board the Ion Space family of launchers. So, busy times. What we're looking at here is uh, what the technical people call the upper composite. The white cylinder we saw there was the upper stage. And there was uh, JCS 13 at the front, and Venus at 2 was uh, right behind it. And Venus at 2 is a fantastic piece of technology. Teams have been working hard to prepare it. JCSAT-13 is a replacement satellite of JCSAT-4A, which is providing Skypark TV digital broadcasting services to Japan. JCSAT-13 has 44 KU band high power transponders for Japan B, Southeast Asia B, and two steerable beams to provide extensive coverages over Asia and Oceania. Of course. Technical achievement still relies on people and teamwork. I always enjoy working together with them for the common goal of mission success. They are highly organized, professional, and doing great jobs. I would like to express my appreciation to Alien Space, CNES, Lockheed Martin, Comsat, and all people who involved in our project. 26 years of commercial partnership between Iron Space and Japan have established extremely strong connections and high expectations for the future. Taking this opportunity, I would like to deeply appreciate people in the world who prayed and supported for Japanese victims of the Great East Japan earthquake and tsunami. Thank you so much for thinking of us. Yes, and uh, we all hope for the future and hold our hearts together for Japan. Ion Space has already carried 26 satellites for Japanese operator, and we are very pleased to deliver the 27th. JCSAT-13 will be an important addition to an already impressive fleet. Sky Perfect JSAT is committed to offering more value. This commitment is underpinned by our space and satellite business above all else. Sky Perfect JSAT is the world's fifth largest satellite communications provider in terms of sales. Japan's only satellite communications operator, Sky Perfect JSAT has a fleet of 15 satellites, making the company the largest satellite operator in Asia. In addition to Japan, Asia, and Oceania, a partnership with Intelsat enables SkyPerfect JSAT to cover Hawaii and all of North America 
providing these regions with a broad selection of satellite communication services. Our satellite communications network is used not only for broadcasting SkyPerfect TV services, but also for sending and relaying video signals on behalf of terrestrial broadcasting stations and much more. From emergency backup links to disaster readiness and crisis management data infrastructure, we also offer a multitude of special applications that maximize the advantages of satellite communications. These services support people in a myriad of ways. SkyPerfect JSAT is also working to address growing demand for satellite communication services. As a successor to JCSAT 4A, JCSAT 13 will be launched to take on communication services in Asia and the countries of the Pacific and support the broadcasts of SkyPerfect TV. Backed by technological expertise honed since the dawn of satellite communications and by its pioneering spirit, SkyPerfect JSAT is now expanding its horizons, reaching out from Japan to partners all around the world. SkyPerfect JSAT offers a multi-channel pay TV broadcasting service that is enlarging the scope of entertainment in Japan. Its space and satellite business is trustworthy and reliable. Through these two socially significant services, SkyPerfect JSAT will continue to help enriching the lives of people and society as a whole. Bringing value down to earth. We are SkyPerfect JSAT Corporation. Right, we're uh, flying over the Atlantic, heading towards the west coast of Africa. And before, we were using all our power to get away from the Earth. But if you look at that curve on the left, you can see we're now using it to go faster and higher. Yes, we need to increase both our speed and our altitude to reach the injection conditions. JTSAT 13 will replace JTSAT 4A. It is an important satellite which will cater for multi channel pay TV services. In addition, JTSAT 13 carries Asian beam transponders. We believe that the Southeast Asian market is very active and that JTSAT 13 will play an important role for the expansion of our global business. Aerial Space launched our first satellite, JCSAT-1, in 1989. Since then, our good relationship has continued. Tonight's launch is the 18th launch we have entrusted to Aerial Space. Aerial Space is the most reliable and important partner for us. So let's turn our attention now to Venus at 2. This is an important satellite for everybody in Vietnam and beyond, and we're delighted that people are watching us all over the world. And especially on TV in Vietnam. Great to have you with us today at Ariane Space. We are very proud to deliver your satellite. Absolutely. It's, it is great to have you with us. Teams have been working for some weeks at the Guyana Space Center to prepare it for today's launch. It's been a great collaborative effort. Venusat 2 is the second spacecraft that we delivered to the NPT for Vietnam. Venusat 1 was launched in 2008. Venusat 2 has additional capabilities with state of the art communications such as digital television, telephone, and high speed internet access. Lockheed Martin is responsible for the satellite, ground stations in Hanoi and outside of Ho Chi Minh City, and procuring the launch vehicle from Arian Space. We're very pleased working with Lockheed Martin team. Very dedicated, uh, not only in manufacturing satellite, ground system, but also they have it in dealing with the frequency coordination with the other operator. We hosted a field office of the NPT and Telstan engineers who worked closely with Lockheed Martin during the design, fabrication, and test phases of the program. In a set is a very tight schedule, so all the team have to work very hard to achieve that goal. The NPT 
Join Lockheed Martin during the reviews with Arian Space. We conducted weekly status meetings and conducted quarterly management reviews both in the U.S. and Vietnam so VNPT could have full visibility into the status and progress of the Venusat 2 program. I would like to thank VNPT for the honor of managing the Venusat 2 program. The collaborative team effort, the sharing of your beautiful country and culture has made this a very enjoyable experience for me. The world welcome from Finland and the weather in Kuru make me feel like home in Vietnam. <laughs> it is similar. We're now flying over the west coast of Africa. We've crossed the Atlantic in just 20 minutes. That's an incredible thing, isn't it? Yes, it is, thanks to the principle of suborbital flight. If we were flying on iron, we will do Paris to Hanoi in 45 minutes. Incredible. Uh, that could be a daily commute. Venusat 2 will provide an entire range of telecom services. After nearly 30 years of renovation, Vietnam has made significant economic, political and socio-cultural achievements. The passage and position of Vietnam has been enhanced in the international arena. The IT and telecommunication sector of Vietnam in general, and VNPT in particular, has made active contribution to the rapid and sustainable development of the country. Vietnam has caught up with the development of the world ICT and telecommunication industry, serving the communications needs of more than 85 million people in Vietnam and bridging the gap between Vietnam and the world, thereby accelerating the industrialization and modernization of the country. As a major academic group of Vietnam, the Vietnam Posts and Telecommunication Group, or VNPT, not only provides posts and telecommunication services to the citizens, but is also the pioneer in the use and exploitation of scientific and technical advances to better serve the needs of customers and partners, thereby contributing actively to the task of ensuring national security for the country. The launch of Vinasat 1 satellite has been of great significance as it made Vietnam become one of the six countries in the region that has a satellite of its own. Especially, it has backed up and upgraded the national IT infrastructure, providing ICT services for remote, mountainous border and island areas, thus contributing to national security and defense, and flattened storm prevention and control. Vinasat 2 satellite will serve as a backup for Vinasat 1 satellite, because it's a rule in ICT industry that security and safety must be 100% guaranteed. Therefore, in case an incident happens to Vinasat 1, we still have a backup. Moreover, keeping our orbit positions is a key task for us, otherwise other countries will all do it permanently, and then there will be no more orbit positions for us. Owning another orbit position will benefit the country's satellite information networks not just now, but also in the future. After more than four years, over 90% of the capacity of Vinasat-1 has been sold to customers, including Vietnam broadcasting agencies like VTV, VTC, or VOV, and many other international customers. Given its passage and experience in the field, VMPT is again entrusted by the government to launch the Vinasat-2. As with the Vinasat-1 project, Vinasat-2 has once again confirmed the expansion of ICT and telecommunication industry of Vietnam, as well as the mutual understanding and beneficial cooperation between VMPT Group and its international partners, such as Lockheed Martin, Telesat and Ariane Space. The successful launch of Vinasat 2 today again contributes to claiming the right of Vietnam to use the orbital slots in the space, while confirming that Vietnam can step by step master the advanced technology of the world. VNPT thanks all the partners Lockheed Martin, Ariane Space, Telesat Canada, Gassi, PTI Baviet, and Marsh for the active participation in the Vinasat 2 project.
So we are 24 and a half minutes into the flight. I think this is a good time to take a look at our speed and our altitude. Um, looking at that curve on the left-hand side there, Antoine, we are climbing now higher and higher. Yes, we are at uh, 640 kilometers high and uh, at a speed of 9.3 kilometers per second. Flight is very calm, operations are very smooth at the moment. It's quite perfect. And uh, it is nonetheless quite remarkable to think of the speeds, nine kilometers, over nine kilometers a second. We've had the cutoff uh, of the, of the uh, uh, upper stage. Yes, we are. We got it. And the onboard computer sent the command to switch off the engine. That's because we're on the right path at the right speed to start the process of releasing the satellite. So you can see the engine switched off and we're now entering what we call the ballistic phase. Am I right in saying ballistic means without propulsion? Yes, we are high enough and fast enough to cruise without the engine. So we're now starting the process of separating the satellites. Uh, it's a very, very carefully planned set of manoeuvres. And we often call it the space ballet because we see the upper stage twisting and turning. And it's a bit like a ballet. What's actually happening? What are we looking at here? These satellites, we have to continue their journey on their own to their final orbit. And to do that, we must put them in the right position, but also to the right attitude. This is a very precise process. Now, you can't see them at the moment, but you might see them in a minute. White flashes on the upper stage. What are they? They represent the small thrusters on the upper composite. Uh, we use them to orientate the composite, and they use bursts of cough gas to give uh, small thrust. It's uh, 1,000 times less powerful than the upper stage engine, and the composite uh, can turn in any direction. So it's all very, very clever stuff, very carefully planned. And uh, you were talking there about those uh, thrusters. It's called the SCAR system. Separation du satellite JCSAT 13. And we have separation of JCSAT 13. And there she goes into uh, space. A new baby is born. Congratulations to Sky Perfect JSAT and everybody at Lockheed Martin. Yes, that was good work. Gokuro Samales, I may say in Japan, JCZ-13 can now begin its journey. That's right, it has to climb to its position on geostationary orbit and it will do that on its own. But we still have Venusat-2 attached. And both satellites were built by Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin is extremely proud to partner with our customers, Sky Perfect JSAT Corporation and Vietnam Post and Telecommunications Group to deliver our 100th and 101st commercial geostationary satellites. JCSAT-13, built for Sky Perfect JSAT Corporation of Japan and Venusat-2, manufactured for VNVT will join the Lockheed Martin commercial satellite fleet in a historic dual launch on an Ariane 5. This means that the Lockheed Martin satellite fleet will surpass 1,000 years in orbit over the next few months. JCSAT-13 carries an all-KU band payload comprising of 44 high-power communication channels with uplink and downlink coverage over Japan and Indonesia. It's designed for a 15-year service life and will be located at 124 degrees east longitude. Two steerable antennas provide quick response coverage for new and emerging markets, spanning the Earth from the orbital slot and covering a wide geographic area with multiple transponders in each steerable beam. Extensive onboard switching allows for payload reconfiguration on orbit allowing full optimization of the frequency plan. Venusat 2, the second Lockheed Martin satellite built for VNPT, will provide fixed satellite service to Vietnam and neighboring countries. The satellite features 24 KU band channels, providing uplink and downlink coverage, and will be located at 131.8 degrees east longitude. Venusat-2 has a 15-year design life with additional fuel reserves to maximize maneuvering life. 
Lockheed Martin's low risk solution using Heritage KU band flight proven equipment from numerous previous programs to meet the VNPT schedule requirements. We also marked the first dual launch of A2100 satellites aboard an Ariane 5 launch vehicle. Ariane Space has previously launched 15 A2100 satellites successfully. Lockheed Martin has played a leading role in the world's space and satellite programs for over a half a century. And our satellite broadcasting systems, satellite communication systems, and support services span the entire Earth. We've provided our customers with innovative solutions for their business requirements using superior technical capabilities, design and engineering, manufacturing, operation support, and problem solving. When you think of satellites, think of Lockheed Martin first. The upper stage has a brain, the intelligent part. We call it the vehicle equipment bay, and it's thanks to this that the launcher knows what to do. I suppose it's a bit like an onboard computer, Antoine. It's even more than a computer. It's a whole management system because it analyzes information from the engines, the navigation, then it makes decisions for the best outcome of a mission. Ariane Space, as we heard there, and Lockheed Martin are old friends. And uh, by the way, a special hello to Roy Weller, who's worked on all the Lockheed Martin missions from CSG. Good to have you with us once again. Over now to Joe Rickers. On behalf of Lockheed Martin, welcome to everyone around the world viewing the launch of JCSAT-13 and Venusat-2. We're so proud to be marking a historic milestone with all of you. JCSAT-13 and Venusat-2 are our 100th and 101st commercial geosatellites delivered to customers worldwide. And it's the first dual launch of Lockheed Martin's award-winning A2100 satellite series. Since our first ge commercial geosatellite launch in 1975, Lockheed Martin has been at the forefront of the satellite industry. And this launch is a testament to the continuing and enduring legacy of Lockheed Martin space and satellite programs. Our previous 99 commercial geosatellites are nearing 1,000 years in orbit. Soon, JCSAT-13 and Venusat-2 will join the Lockheed Martin fleet, delivering vital communications to nearly every region of our Earth. It's especially meaningful that we share this event with SkyPerfect JSAT, and VNPT, both longtime valued customers of Lockheed Martin. We thank you for your great teamwork and support, which helped make this day possible. And finally, thanks to Ariane Spas. We look forward to a great ride tonight. In conclusion, I'd like to say, go A2100, go JCSAT-13, go Venusat-2, and go Ariane 5. Ariane delivers the satellites into what we call a, a transfer orbit, uh, several thousand kilometres above the Earth. But from there they have to travel another 30,000 kilometres or so to their final orbit. It is called geostationary orbit and it is 36,000 kilometres above the Earth. Once they get there, they go through a set of manoeuvres before they can start full operations. Uh, they have to be deployed, of course. We're going to find out now what will happen to them in the next phase of their adventures. Following uh, separation from the launch vehicle, about 30 minutes uh, later, we will acquire both satellites uh, from our Urala ground station in Australia. And during that time, once we acquire, we'll assess our spacecraft health and um, verify that everything is nominal for both satellites. We have a series of uh, liquid apogee engine burns uh, for both satellites that will uh, raise the orbit and get them to uh, their nominal orbit position uh, in the geo belt. Testing for both satellites will take approximately 30 to 45 days. And upon completion of uh, that test phase, we will then drift the satellites to their operational location and uh, get ready for handover to our customers. Uh, we anticipate uh, those handovers to occur late June for Venusat 2 and mid-July for uh, JCSAT 13. 
So we've flown across Africa. We're now heading out across the Indian Ocean. We're roughly between the Seychelles and the Maldives. What's our speed and altitude, Antoine? Uh, speed is just under 8 km per second and altitude just above 2,500 km. So Venusat is underneath that black structure that you can see there attached to the upper stage. We call it the silda and it's what a little bit like a small fairing. It provides the attachment mechanism for JCSAT-13 and it also makes dual launches possible on Ariane 5. That's right, and that is, of course, one of the special offerings of Ariane 5, the capacity to launch two satellites at the same time. Separation du système de lancement double Ariane. And we have separation now of that SILDA. Here it is coming away from the vehicle, and for the first time, we can see Venusat 2. Now, it, it always amazes me, but of course everything looks uh, very, as if it's happening very slow. But the truth is it's actually all happening very fast up there, isn't it? Yeah, that's because on Earth there are always objects around, like buildings or trees, so we get uh, quite a sense of uh, relativity. But here we are in space and there is nothing for us to compare with. And uh, it's that speed that allows us to effectively slingshot, if you like, our satellites into their orbit, isn't it? Yes, imagine if you were to sling a stone fast enough and high enough, it would keep on going instead of uh, falling down to the earth. I think that's a great image, uh, throwing a stone that never comes back down. And there we have a uh, separation of Venusat 2. Separation du satellite Venusat 2. A job well done. Congratulations to everybody at VNPT and at Lockheed Martin. Yes, congratulations, and I will try it in, <laughs> in Vietnamese. Tsin Sok Moon, I would say. Very good. <laughs> well, the teams have worked incredibly hard to bring us to today, and uh, I think everybody deserves a huge pat on the back. It's certainly a very good feeling, Antoine. Um, this is the culmination of many months, and for some many years, work. Yes, of course. Let's precise that uh, Ayan's job is not over yet because we have uh, to get rid of the upper stage. So we, it has to distance itself and there are, there are the passivation uh, phases uh, to, to start. And passivation is that process by which we distance the upper stage. And look, everyone, very, very happy there. Very happy faces. Here in uh, the Jupiter control room, mission control, they are the mission controllers and the various people from the customers. Um, and of course, the uh, people we can see in the background are the VIPs who have been watching this launch on those big screens. So the satellites, as we said, are just starting on their journey. What's going to happen next, Antoine? They will undergo a full battery of uh, tests uh, before being uh, delivered to their final customers. And it is expected that uh, the end of uh, June uh, for Venusat 2, and uh, it is uh, in the middle of uh, July for JCSAT 13. It was uh, Mr. McDonald who, who told gave us, us about that this. information, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yes. Lots of handshaking, and uh, I think, as I said earlier, I think everybody can feel very, very proud. Uh, it's been a, a very successful mission, absolutely beautifully handled in every way. And uh, we had some wonderful shots as well, uh, some wonderful images. Here they are. Yes, about the liftoff. Beautiful. It really was quite a, a sensational launch, wasn't it? We had the fantastic images of those boosters falling away. That's not something we yeah. see every time. Yes, <laughs> and we, every time there's also the very big noise that uh, comes right through us uh, here inside the building in, uh, in Jupiter Center. That's right, and actually when the launcher flies over, you can feel the vibrations, can't you? She really is quite a beast.
And of course, we were lucky to see these images as well, given that it's the raining season. And quite often during the raining season, we don't actually get to see that much because of the clouds. But we have been incredibly lucky. We haven't had uh, too much rain. Yes, it was awesome to, to witness this uh, very specific and important, important uh, launch from uh, like clockwork. Op operators. <coughs> As you have uh, witnessed, this 60-second launch of Erin 5 has just um, orbited JCSAT 13 and Finsat 2. And I am particularly glad for this because it is the 48th success in a row for our launch vehicle, which is absolutely outstanding. And secondly, because this uh, launch um, is exactly at the scheduled date, which is, again, further proof to the competence of our operational team. And also, because the two satellites that we have just uh, sent uh, um, for Asia have uh, allowed our company to send over 300 satellites on orbit, uh, plus some 50 auxiliary passengers. It's a major milestone. Uh, if we include these additional 50 um, passengers. So I would like to extend my warmest thanks to our clients, Sky Perfect, JSAT, the NPT, and Lockheed Martin, and all those who have come here to attend this launch in Guyana. Uh, I will start with JCSAT 13. It's now 25 years since the launch of JCSAT 1 in 1989, that SkyPerfect JSAT, the largest satellite operator in Asia, has consistently entrusted us with launch of their satellites. We are very proud to seal this uh, friendship between our two companies uh, with tonight's launch, and I would like to again thank my friend Shinji Takeda, um, the CEO of SkyPerfect JSAT, who is uh, with us tonight, so bravo again. And, as you know, Japan is one of uh, Aryan Space's major partners. JCSAT-13 is the 27th uh, Japanese satellite that we launch, and I'm certain there are many more to come. Mr. Takamatsu, we count on you. Venusat-2 now. I'm also very proud of uh, this uh, successful launch of the second Vietnamese telecommunication satellite. Four years after the launch of Vinasat 1, this new success is particularly important for Vietnam. And I know that uh, uh, many of you have been following this milestone event from Hanoi. In particular, I would like to extend my thanks to the chairman of BNPT, Mr. Van Han Tham, who is in Hanoi following uh, this uh, launch uh, from Vietnam. And of course, Mr. Uh, Vu Tran Hong, my friend here, present with us. So again, congratulations to you too. Tonight's launch is also a special one for Aaron Space and Lockheed Martin. And I would like to thank Mr. Joe Rickers, who is here, as every time we um, launch one of uh, their satellites, uh, you are here with us in Guyana. And I would like to thank you, because you were the one who chose to uh, launch Vinasat 2 with Ariane Space as a dual launch, uh, two satellites of Lockheed Martin, which goes to show how much you trust Arian Space, and also because it's the 100th and 101st commercial satellite manufactured by Lockheed Martin. So, congratulations again. Of course, uh, to conclude, I would like to thank all those in Europe and in Guyana who, uh, for years, have worked on this launch. And I will not list uh, all of them because you, you know I, I would maybe miss one and, and it would be troublesome. So anyway, all my thanks to all of you. And uh, you know, success after success, this has further strengthened the position of Europe on the uh, international uh, space uh, scene of space industry. So obviously, it's a thriving business. And thanks to you, it is so. Uh, thanks to you for this 48th uh, successful launch. 
Now, uh, as you have seen, I'm particularly delighted with this uh, new successful launch, and uh, therefore I will, without further ado, leave the floor to our clients for Jesse Sat 13, Mr. Shinsu Takada, Vinsat 2, Mr. Fu Chuan Hong, and for Lockheed Martin, Mr. Joe Rickers, and for the uh, CSG, Mr. Shulabauer, Mr. Takada, first of all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ruga. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shinji Takada. This is my first time seeing a launch, and it truly has been a wonderful experience for me. Firstly, I would like to extend, extend our sincere appreciation to Mr. Ruga, Alien Space, and all people involved at CSG for their efforts toward today's launch. Arian Space and JSAT have worked together for 25 years since our first satellite, JCSAT-1. Arian Space has always pro provided us with exceptional services, and it helped us to become one of the leading satellite operators in Asia. Secondly, I would like to thank Mr. Joe Rickers and Rocky Martin for their remarkable effort to deliver our satellite on time. We are very familiar with Rocky Martin's high-quality satellite, as JSAT-13 is a 682100 satellite for us. I trust that this new satellite is very reliable in orbit as well. Also, I am delighted that this, this flight, V206, carried two satellites manufactured by Lockheed Martin, and they are the 100 and 101st satellites. I am very honored to share this rememberable moment with Mr. Wu Chuan Fung from Vietnam Post and Telecommunications Group. And would like to congratulate the Rocky Martin team for their wonderful achievement. Our new JCSAT 13 is a follow on satellite for JCSAT 4A, which is being used for our domestic DTH platform, Sky Perfect TV. This satellite has 44 KU band transponders and will make our position stronger as Japan's number one DTH operator. It will also play a very important role over Asia, where there's strong demand and continuous growth. With its powerful Southeast Asia beam and two steerable beams, we are confident that this is a certain will meet the demand in those markets. Finally, I would like to take this moment to reflect on the disaster that struck Japan last year. To express our hope for early recovery, we have attached a special logo onto this launch vehicle. And as a Japanese company, we would like to thank all people around the world for providing us so much support during our hard time. I would like to conclude my speech with deepest gratitude and respect for all people involved in this certain program. Thank you. Quý vị đại biểu, thay mặt tập đoàn Bưu Chính Viễn Thông Việt Nam, tôi xin gửi lời chào trân trọng nhất và chân thành cảm ơn quý vị đại biểu, các nhà báo đã đến chứng kiến sự kiện phóng vệ tinh ngày hôm nay. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of VNPT Group, I wish to convey the kind regards and sincere thanks to all distinguished delegates 
impressed with the presentatives for coming to witness the satellite launching ceremony today. Thưa quý vị đại biểu, Vinasat 2, quả vệ tinh thứ hai của Việt Nam vừa được phóng thành công từ Kuru Guyana bay vào quỹ đạo địa tĩnh 121,8 độ đông, xác lập vị trí quỹ đạo địa tĩnh của Việt Nam trên thế giới về thông tin vệ tinh trong không gian. Từ vị trí này, Vinasat 2 của Việt Nam sẽ phủ sóng tới các vùng rộng lớn gồm Việt Nam, Lào, Campuchia, Thái Lan, Myanmar, Singapore và một phần lãnh thổ của Malaysia. Đây là sự kiện đặc biệt quan trọng đối với ngành thông tin và truyền thông Việt Nam nói chung và tập đoàn bưu chính viễn thông Việt Nam nói riêng. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vinasat 2 and second satellite Vietnam was just successfully launched from Kuru Guiana into the geostationary orbit at 131.8 east, confirming the opponent's position of Vietnam in the space. From this position, Vinasat 2 will cover a large area of Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Myanmar, Singapore, and a part of Malaysia. This is an event of special significance to the ICT and telecommunication sector of Vietnam in general, and to the NBT in particular. Vinasat 2 đưa vào hoạt động sẽ cùng với vệ tinh Vinasat 1 tạo thành một hệ thống vệ tinh nhằm nâng cao năng lực kinh doanh, độ an toàn, tin cậy cho mạng viễn thông Việt Nam, đồng thời trợ giúp và dự phòng cho các mạng hạ tầng truyền dẫn mặt đất, thúc đẩy sự phát triển của ngành vệ tinh viễn thông Việt Nam, mang lại lợi ích chung cho cộng đồng và phục vụ chiến lược phát triển, kinh doanh dài hạn không những của VNPT trong lĩnh vực thông tin vệ tinh, mà còn đáp ứng nhu cầu của nền kinh tế đang phát triển năng động của Việt Nam, cũng như sự hòa nhập với cộng đồng khu vực và trên thế giới về kinh tế và văn hóa xã hội. The Vinasat 2 will be put into operation when join Vinasat 1 to form a satellite network which helps to improve the business capabilities, safety and reliability of the Vietnam telecommunication network as well as support and back up the terrestrial transmission infrastructure thereby promoting the satellite industry of Vietnam, bringing the common values to the community, community and enabling the long-term development and business plan of VMPT in satellite communications. It also helps satisfy the needs of the dynamic economy of Vietnam and integrate it into the world and regional community in all areas of life. Thưa quý vị đại biểu, Vinasat 2 là vệ tinh viễn thông do công ty Telesat Canada tư vấn và giám sát. Công ty Lockheed Martin sản xuất và Ariane Space của Pháp thực hiện dịch vụ phóng linh quỹ đạo địa tĩnh. Đây cũng là các đối tác đã hợp tác thành công với VMPT trong dự án phóng vệ tinh Vinasat 1. Chúng tôi đánh giá cao sự hợp tác của quý vị đã tích cực cùng với chúng tôi thực hiện dự án sản xuất phóng vệ tinh thành công Vinasat 2 đạt các yêu cầu về công nghệ và kỹ thuật với trình độ cập nhật của thế giới. Ladies and gentlemen, Vinasat 2 is a telecommunication satellite which was manufactured by Lockheed Martin with the consultation and supervision of Telesat and launched by Ariane Space into the geo orbit. These are also the partners having closely cooperated with VNPT in the Vinasat 1 project. We highly appreciate the active cooperation that you have extended to VNBT in implementing our project of building up and launching the Vinasat 2, meeting on timing and technological requirements and keeping up with the world standards. Việc tiếp tục được giao nhiệm vụ làm chủ đầu tư và thực hiện dự án phóng vệ tinh Vinasat 2 thể hiện sự tin tưởng của chính phủ Việt Nam đối với VNBT, đồng thời ghi nhận sự phát triển và tiếp tục lớn mạnh của VNBT với vai trò là doanh nghiệp chủ lực của Việt Nam trên lĩnh vực bưu chính viễn thông và công nghệ thông tin. VNPT has again been entrusted by the government of Vietnam to launch a Vinasat 2 satellite. It is a testament of the continuous growth of VNPT in the position of the leading operator of post-ICT and telecommunications of Vietnam. Nhân dịp này, chúng tôi xin chân thành cảm ơn sự nỗ lực hợp tác, làm việc hết sức mình của các cán bộ của Bộ Thông tin và Truyền thông Việt Nam, Tập đoàn Bưu chính Viễn thông Việt Nam, các chuyên gia của Lockheed Martin, Telesat, Arian Space trong suốt 24 tháng qua để tất cả chúng ta được sự được có mặt tại buổi lễ này chứng kiến sự kiện phóng thành công vệ tinh vi sát thứ hai của Việt Nam vào quỹ đạo địa tĩnh. On this occasion, we should thank the official and expert from the Ministry of Information and Communication of Vietnam, VNPT, Lockheed Martin, Telesat, and Ariane Espas for their hard work and efforts over the last 24 months' time, so that we can be able to we are able to gather here today and witness the successful launch of the second satellite Vietnam into geo orbit. Chúng tôi hoàn toàn tin tưởng rằng với sự nỗ lực của Việt Nam cùng các đối tác với tính chuyên nghiệp và trình độ công nghệ kỹ thuật tiên tiến của các hãng Lockheed Martin, Ariane Space, vệ tinh Vinasat 2 sẽ sớm được đưa vào khai thác, sử dụng phục vụ nhu cầu thông tin lạc của nhân dân Việt Nam với chất lượng cao và ổn định. We are fully confident that with the collaborative endeavors from Vietnamese team and its partners, professionalism and the state of the art technology of Lockheed Martin and Ariane Space, Vinasat 2 will be put into operation with high quality and reliability at the earliest possible time to serve the communication needs of Vietnamese people. Cũng nhân dịp này, chúng tôi xin chúc mừng người bạn đồng hành là vệ tinh GCSAT 13 của Nhật Bản, 
cùng với hệ thống vệ tinh Vinasat 2 của Việt Nam vừa được phóng thành công lên quỹ đạo. Đây là những vệ tinh thương mại thứ 100 và 101 của Lloyd Martin lần đầu tiên cùng được phóng trên một tên lửa. Chúng tôi xin được chúc mừng nhà sản xuất Lloyd Martin vì sự kiện này. Cuối cùng, xin kính chúc tất cả quý vị đại biểu sức khỏe và thành công. Xin trân trọng cảm ơn. Taking this opportunity, I'd also like to congratulate our co-passenger, the CSAT-13, which joined our Venusat-2 in the journey to the space. These are the 100 and 101st satellite built by Lockheed Martin aboard an Ariane rocket for the first EU launch. We would congratulate Lockheed Martin for their success. And finally, I wish all distinguished guests a good health and success. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Joe Rickers of Lockheed Martin. My job gets a little easier when I get to speak behind two very happy customers. Uh, it gives me time to settle my nerves after uh, a dual dose of, uh, of nervousness tonight. Very tense countdown and a, a very beautiful flight. Uh, boy, looking outside and watching, uh, watching that rocket go overhead uh, really hits home. I want to congratulate Arian Spas and John Yeave Congratulate all those here at CSG that support uh, the, the launches. Your record of success speaks for itself. To our trusted customers, SkyPerfect JSAT and VNPT, we're honored to have you be a part of number 100 and 101. Thanks to all those that are watching in uh, Japan and in Vietnam. I know it's a very early morning for you, but a morning uh, I'm sure very well spent. And uh, to the celebration that's going on in Vietnam, uh, here's to you. We, th we thank you very much. I want to thank also the Lockheed Martin Space Systems employees who are watching in Karoo. Many of them spent a long time down here uh, with the launch campaign, doing two launch campaigns simultaneously. To those in Newtown, to those in Sunnyvale, Stennis, Mississippi, Denver, Colorado, your expertise and dedication is reflected in this dual launch. Now we'll turn our attention to uh, two missions, two very tightly integrated missions. We will uh, do orbit raising of both satellites interleaved here over the upcoming little over a week. We'll go through deployments of the, uh, of the satellite reflectors and solar arrays, and we'll go through an in interleaved in-orbit test. Handovers are our targets here. Our targets are June 28th for Venusat 2 and July 6th for JCSAT 13. We look forward to those handovers of number 100 and 101 to our customers and that their satellites will give them many years of successful operations in orbit. Thank you. Bien. Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening for us at CSG. It was a, a, a back to an ECA, an Arian launch with two satellite, telecommunication satellites, something we hadn't done since September uh, 2011. Uh, and afterwards, there was SOS and VIA. So we are particularly proud to have uh, added this capacity uh, with uh, Arian 5 on GT, which is our most frequent. Um, uh, service at uh, the service uh, in particular of this uh, JC Sat uh, uh, and operator for Japan and uh, VNPT with uh, Venus Sat 2 for Vietnam and of course uh, I would like to th congratulate Lockheed Martin for the 100th and 101st uh, launch is uh, quite a performance for a satellite uh, uh, manufacturer uh, even for the best uh, manufacturer in the world I would like to to also extend my thanks and congratulations to the teams at CNES, at CSG, Air and Space, um, the, the contractors also, uh, the, the teams, uh, the ground uh, contractors teams. Uh, we had a rather eventless uh, uh, launch, uh, but the campaign was uh, quite eventful with quite a few anomalous incidents which we had to overcome, all of us, and 
uh, up to today, we still have a few things to address. So thanks to all those who helped uh, overcoming these uh, uh, incidents. And also, I would like to thank Guyana, its elected representatives, the uh, authorities, and the whole Guyanese uh, population, uh, who is uh, always very keen to follow uh, these events. So um, bravo to all those who contributed to this success, and thanks again for this great event. So uh, next meeting point in a bit more than one month on the 19th of June with a new uh, Aaron 5 ECA launch with EchoStar 17 and MSG 3, both of which have already arrived in Guyana. So have a beautiful evening in Guyana. Um, and uh, uh, a good morning to Asia as it's now getting up. So it's mission accomplished once again for Ariane Espas and the second la launch of an Ariane 5 this year. Congratulations to everyone who's worked so hard. Yes, absolutely, and congratulations to our customers. It was great working with you, and we look forward to doing so again. Two satellites are now heading out on their journey to their final orbit, so the best of luck to all the teams with the next phase of your operations. Thanks for joining us here live at the Guyana Space Center. From me, Katie Haswell. And me, Antoine Courtois. Goodbye. Goodbye.